Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the output of a yes, no column type in a CSV report using Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power App, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting on more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. Okay, so in this video, we're going to change the output of a yes, no column type in a CSV report in Power Automate. So the output of a yes, no column type is going to output true, false, and null when you're using a not yes, no column type. Uh, I really don't use these column types too often because you do have to account for if no one ever entered a value into that, it would show as null and not false. So it's just another step you have to look out for if you're using Power Apps or anything like that. So I usually just, I usually just use a choice and use yes, no's. But if you are on a system where it's already set up and they're using yes, no column types and you want to create a report and you don't want it to show true, false, and null, um, we're going to do that in this video. So let's go ahead and in my employee data list, we're going to create a yes, no column type. And it's going to be if the current worker, if the worker is still currently employed, so we're going to do currently employed. Uh, description type is yes, no. Default value, yes. Let's go ahead and enter some data in this field for some of the columns. I'll make this one yes. I'll make a couple of them yes. And um, I'll show you what I mean with the null value and the false value when I go ahead and create the Power Automate. So we just set the first four to have a currently employed yes, so true. Go ahead and go into our Power Automate and let's go ahead and start working on this flow. So this will be a currently, we'll just name it employee CSV report. And along with this video, I'll show you how to make a quick CSV of a report if you're making a report for another user in your team they want a specific columns to show up we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that I exit out of copilot exit out the new designer uh, maybe i'll do a new video on that in the future using the new designer um, i started using power automate a long time ago so i'm pretty familiar with the old designer so i just keep doing it uh, with the old designer but eventually i'll have to convert to a new designer so let's go ahead and get the items from our SharePoint list. So this is in my marketing SharePoint. And then the list name is employee data. Uh, quick tip, I'm not gonna use any filters, but if you do have a ton of rows, I think it's over like 256 or 100, you're going to wanna turn on pagination and set a limit that's greater than your items in the SharePoint list or else it's not going to return all the values. So our get items is fine. Let's go ahead and select a couple columns that we want in our CSV report. I'm not gonna do everything. I'm just gonna do like the first four, maybe. So to get a selection of values, we're going to use get items for the value. I'm not gonna do any complex uh, data columns. I'm just gonna do the yes, no. Uh, I'm not doing multiple choice, so might be another video on my channel about those columns if you want to include those in your report, but you have to do a little more work to concatenate those values together. So let's go ahead and get the first name of our employee. Let's get the last name, and job title. And then we do want to see if the employee is still employed. So we'll just do employed with a question mark and Let's go ahead and insert our values. So in the get items on the right hand side, we can go ahead and just do that. So my first name is actually the title. So it will be title, last name, job title. So this is a choice value. So I'm going to do job title value because that will actually give me the value that's within that field. You don't want to just do job title. You want to do job title value, with the value at the end or else she'll get like an array with of it, two values in it. Okay, so next we have our employed field. So if I just did it this way, employed, currently employed. So if I ran this, I'll show you what actually populates with the yes, no column. 
we'll just do manually. So that's me for my SharePoint connection. And I'll run the flow. So the flow ran. I didn't have any filters on my get items, so it should return all the values. So if we look at our outputs, let me just make the screen a little bit bigger. So for employee, it shows true. Uh, it should show true for the first four. And I have only encountered this in my work experience because some users don't like seeing true false values. They want to see like a yes, no value instead. And uh, so we're just going to do that to make it easier on the end user. So the first four should be true, first five actually. And then we do have some null values down here. So that's nothing. And we don't want those in our report because user doesn't know. They want like a yes, no. If there's nothing there, uh, you assume it'll be they're not employed. But we just want to make it clear to our user um, that they're really not employed. And so I really don't like using yes, no columns because if you may have like a power app or a power automate, these null values, if you're doing like logic statements, you have to account for if it's null, so is blank in Power Apps, and if it's false, because if I'm, if you go in here and you check something, so they worked here and then you uncheck it, it's actually going to return false. So I'll do that for these two, and I'll show you what I mean. And that's why this column type is a little complicated when you do coding around it. So just be careful. Um, with your logic because you might get some incorrect logic statements and you won't know why that's probably null values or false values <laughs> I've definitely experienced that in my field so as you can see we have false values now for employed because it was checked and then it was unchecked so there was something there and it wasn't null so let's go ahead and actually work on getting that uh, yes no in there so I'm going to bring up um, notepad plus plus but before that I'm going to copy what's in this field so if you just press control a it will copy everything and then just press control c on your keyboard and that will actually get you the code so I'm just doing it in notepad plus plus because if I write it in this expression box it's pretty small you can actually go to view power automate settings if you turn on experimental features you can get a bigger box I'm just going to do it in my notepad notepad plus plus all right so we want to do an if statement and we want to do an equal statement as well so if we do if uh, no capital on the i so if and then a parenthesis equals another parenthesis and then we're going to paste what we have so that is actually the currently employed item and you just want to remove the add symbol right before item because that isn't needed so when you have your column name right there, you can go ahead and put comma. So if this is equal to true, so there's that field is they're currently employed. Uh, we're gonna put a comma true, then a and then parenthesis. So that's our equal statement. So if that's true, it's going to return true. And our if statement, it will run the true condition. And we just wanna have yes. So it's gonna be a single quote, yes. Uh, closing quote comma so if it's not true so this there's nothing there or it was false we want to return no and then we just want to close it up and I like using notepad plus plus because it matches the parentheses so you know if you're missing a parenthesis or not so that will be your statement let me just turn on the experimental features for my power automate settings so we can get a bigger box so you guys can see what it looks like. And it reset my thing. So let me just do this real quick. Okay. So if you turn on experimental features, make sure you save it, exit it, then come back in and turn on the experimental features because sometimes it can reset your whole flow. I thought I saved it, but maybe I didn't. Anyways, we now have a bigger expression box. So I'll just paste the code I have from my notepad and I'll put it in the description down below so pretty much all you have to do is replace this value so that's my column name with your column name and if there's any spaces you might have to account for that but this should work and let's just see if we save it we can run it really quick 
and all those true, null, and false values should change to yes, no values. So let's go ahead and look at our select statement. So now we have yes under employed, yes, yes, yes. Then we have no, and then the ref should be no's because it's either false or null. And that's what we want. Um, and I'm just gonna finish up creating a CSV if you guys know how to do it. Uh, you feel free to skip to the end of the video because there's nothing else I have to do. So we're gonna do a create CSV table and we're going to get select everything from my select statement. So we're just going to get the output of that. Uh, if you want to go custom, but I already mapped out all the values I wanted. So we're just going to do automatic. And then we want to create a file in my SharePoint list. So create a file. Let me find a place to store this. So we'll just do marketing, a folder path. Uh, share documents and then we'll just stick it in general uh, the file name we'll just do employee csv report usually you want to do a timestamp on your file because you can't create a file with the same value so if i just did this uh, employee csv record employee csv report dot csv and someone ran it, then they ran it the next day, it's going to result in an error because it needs a unique file name. So you can either do like a timestamp or you can do, I believe it's GUID and that will generate a unique ID for you. Uh, the file name is going to look ugly, but you won't run into that issue. So that's a little tip for you if you want to do that or else you will encounter that error. And for the file content, we just want to get the output of the CSV table. So let's go ahead and save this. And yeah, you can do a timestamp, but um, GUID is easier. Let's go ahead and test this manually and should create the file. And make sure you do have the file name extension or else it will just create a like blank file. Okay, so it's going to create the file. So let's go ahead and navigate to our documents folder. And then I stuck it on our general and it looks like I have a ton of stuff in here. So let's sort this by new. And as you can see, we have our employee CSV report uh, with the GUID. Uh, let's go ahead and open it in browser. And there we go. We have our little report made of all the employed employees. Sorry about that. When I try to press control T that usually creates a table in Excel if it's on the desktop. So let me just convert this, I guess. And let's just go ahead and create a table. So format as table. Let me add the headers. So now users can search for yes or no. So if they're employed, they go ahead and click yes. And that'll be it for the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, there was a lot of tips in this video. So it should help you out a bunch in Power Automate. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a comment, like, or subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the comments. And I will catch you guys in the next video.